cabin temperature sensor or aspirator is mounted in the roof lining just above the driver's position. For the Hummer, the aspirator is quite a small device. Its job is to measure the cabin temperature and feed that information back to the AC controller. The unit only has four connections, two of which go to a thermistor, the other two go to a fan which helps circulate the air. The aspirator is arranged as follows. Inside there is a fan, a circuit board, and the small device here is the thermistor. The thermistor is just a variable resistor which has got a negative temperature coefficient. When the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down. If the thermistor should go open circuit, the AC controller interprets this as maximum temperature and as such turns the cooling on to maximum. It does this very quickly, so any loose connection, any break in the circuit or a fault with the thermistor will result in the AC going haywire. I'm going to look at changing the aspirator or internal cabin temperature sensor. I already have a replacement one here and I've already done some work on the vehicle before with the aspirator which stopped working. I'll try and give a full description of exactly what went wrong with it and how to diagnose a fault with the aspirator and what it does to the internal AC system. But I purchased a new one anyway because I didn't honestly think that I'd be able to repair the old one but I did manage to repair the old one. The new one is different. They've improved this considerably. On these new one you can see that the thermistor is in the centre of the port on the bottom there. And also they've improved the fan system inside so that it actually sucks air in and circulates it through which I think it's probably an improvement in performance and given that I'm going to swap out the one that I've got in there at the moment. Here we have the wiring diagram for the heating, ventilation and air conditioning control module. That connects to the inside air temperature sensor assembly or aspirator which in turn connects to the IP relay block which is down by the driver's feet in the dash front left hand side of the vehicle and then we have the wiring in between. So I'll we'll start with the aspirator. Connector A, which is this one, connects to the IP relay block and goes to this inside air temperature signal here, which is pin A on HVAC control module. Then we have connector B, which is this one here, which also connects to the IP relay block and then goes to the temperature sensor assembly control, which is this one here, which is pin L. Then we've got pin C, which is this one here, which basically just connects to ground. Similarly, connector D, which is this brown wire here, actually connects to the low reference K on HVAC module. All in all, it's quite simple. There's just those three main components involved in the wiring. Now, if you do have any troubles with your aspirator, you can check the connections here. You can, you can check to see if the aspirator's thermistor, which is this component here, is actually a valid value. And I'll, I'll discuss that later. You can check that when the air conditioning is on and the engine is running that you've actually got 12 volts coming through to, to be on your aspirator here by checking it on the IP relay block. And essentially you can, you can basically diagnose anything really to do with the wiring from this point here. You get a good view whether it's a problem with your HVAC control module or your aspirator. If we take a look at IP relay block connector C4, you can see there are only three pins that concern us. They're pins D, E, F which are these signals here, inside air temperature sensor signal, low reference and control. And they come out onto this connector here, which I believe is as you look into the connector. If we look at the physical IP relay block, connector C4, it's located in this position here, top right hand corner. Again, here is the physical IP relay block positioned down by the front left hand side of the vehicle by the driver's legs. And there you can see that is connector C4. There will be a black removable cover that clips on top of the relay block, which is quite easy to remove. Returning to the main wiring diagram, we can zoom in on connector C4. and We can see where it connects to the inside air temperature sensor assembly. And then again, we can see the pins on connector C4, E, D and F. Here is the location of the IP relay block. To remove the cover off the block, pull this little locking plastic catch off. And then on each side, on the front back there's three three tabs that you need to just pull away with your fingers it's hard to do what well, i'm showing you but i'll try that's that one that's, 
that one. And then the cover just comes off and now you can see the IP relay block and there's connector C4. It's right down by your brake pedal. Inside the IP relay block cover, you can see they've put a label on there identifying the connectors. And it's actually on here, there's on the top right hand corner, headliner two six way CRM. If we take a look at the inside air temperature sensor replacement, the official GM procedure, step one is remove the left windshield garnish moulding, refer to windshield pillar garnish moulding replacement, remove the left sunshade, gently pull down the headliner, remove the inside air temperature sensor from the headliner. It's a little bit over the top really because what we can do is just pull down the headliner by the sunroof without actually removing anything else. Also the description of changing the sensor doesn't give you enough detail on what you need to do. It's very vague on content so we're going to discuss that in a lot more detail. Before um, when I was looking at the uh, cabin temperature as it's called the inside air temperature sensor which we the Tech 2 thinks is running at 141 degrees Fahrenheit, hence the, the vents are going into overdrive. It's IPC2. It's the white connector above the brown connector on the right hand side of the IP relay block. And it's the top right hand two pins. Now I've confirmed that by buzzing the wires through to the connector on the back of the climate control unit. Taking an excellent suggestion from someone on the Hummer forums, instead of removing the sunshade and the A-post and all of that, the suggestion is we just pull the trim back here. The uh, lining is held on by Velcro, I believe. So we're going to give that a go. In the roof here is the aspirator. I've already got a cushion to sit on because you need to sit on the centre console. And I've got some tools, a selection of tools here to actually help me. I've got some flat blade knives some little picking tools and a, st a small steel rule just to help me remove the wiring and connector now this little plastic part has got to come out and to do that there's a the base unit above it has been glued in you've got to unglue it and somehow push this part off you don't get that with your new aspirate so this sits in the vehicle that way around and that pushes into those four slots on the bottom there. Just slide the, the visor back on your roof, pull off the trim, which comes off really easy. And then underneath here are some Velcro pads. You can hear it prise off. And there we are, we're now inside. We can get to the aspirator, you can just see the aspirator in the back there. Here we can see the aspirator. On mine, there's a piece of black tape that sits over the top, maybe to stop it vibrating or touching. I've got a torch on it so you can see. But we can see we can see the aspirator. In my case there's some heavy gluing around the housing of the aspirator which I may have to remove. But on the, the opposite side I've put a mirror in here you can see there is just like another tab I think. There are three tabs. One where my finger is, one at the front there and one on the other side. I'm going to take the tape off spring the tabs and lift the cover off. It's hard to show you but you can see that I've lifted one of the tabs up and lifted it over its catch. So now we've got to do one of the other remaining two in order to get the cover off. As you can see my aspirator has come away and it's very difficult to show you with the camera and get in because it's very tight in there. I'll just pull it forward so you can see it. Here you can see I've flipped it on its side, the camera's trying to focus on my hand. And now we just sort of release the, the connector that's holding the cover on. Now I don't think it's going to stay in that position. Just trying to take the focus off my hand and there you can see. We're going to lift that little catch off the connector and pull it out. I've got some small tools to do that. It's hard to show you whilst it's in position but I've got a tool with a little hook on. And if you hook that over that edge there and pull on that and then pull the connector towards you it will just slide off. So now we're left with the cable and the remaining houses, which you can see has been glued in and somehow we've got to get that free. Just to explain, that's the old aspirator and here is the new one. They are very different in construction. The cases are different and you can't swap them over. They will not plug in. They're two entirely different assemblies. So they're not compatible. If we turn that on the right way, you can see underside there's 
a different casing arrangement so for those who thought well why don't you just swap this over with that one you can't right so you've got to take off that that uh, remaining part to help visualize the task head you can see there's there's four slots and you can see the part underneath there's four lugs which we've got to somehow prise down you can't actually see them with your naked eye only th with the aid of a mirror so that's what you face with right here I have the little vent cover not quite sure what it's called which pushes into that uh, mating part that's the old one you can see there's the hole in the lining and as you can see that the hole is now free from glue there's a massive amount of glue inside which is probably quite hard and difficult to peel I found the only way to get it out or get it off is to use the flat blade of a screwdriver to peel one edge and then just keep pulling on it and pulling on it until it comes off to get the little cover off just poke a screwdriver a wide flat blade screwdriver underneath the edge and lift one side and once you've started to free it it will come away be careful not to lose this part which I did it went shooting off now we have the lining free very little resin or glue on the top there which I've peeled most of it off because I think you're going to need to do that otherwise the other one won't sit properly whether or not I glued the new one in place using a glue gun I don't know I might just leave it a while just see if it stays put for the sake of completeness here are the two aspirators broken down so you can see how different they are this is the original um, you can see you have a an impeller which is not got scoops on the on, on the, the word is there's hardly any blades it's more like an air disturber rather than a fan so that goes into the bearing there right. so that's held in by magnetism and the thermistor folds over the top like that now if you've got a, a buzzing noise your thermistor could be scraping on to, on the fan blades so that then sits inside the housing clips in this four mountain pegs and then the base literally like so so that's the original aspirator which works now the new version also has the thermistor and that thermistor connects directly to the HVAC control unit nothing there's no other active um, components it's just a straight connection to the HVAC control unit and you can see that they've now rearranged the motor um, instead of being a papst fan which is on the other one this is kind of discrete coil so this too fits inside the housing that pokes in like that just pops in um, it also has a, a, a an impeller but you can see the fella the impeller, impeller you can see the impeller has got actual blades on there to actually force the air around when the case is put together like this you have a the thermistor folds it over and, and clips into place I can't do it with one hand but it, it actually locks into place and you can see there's a vent there it looks to me as if they've improved this so we're now taking in air from within the cabin over the thermistor and out into the roof space where this one has got a kind of a vent but like I say it's more like an air disturber what the overall effect of it I don't improvement it will be I don't know but it might just be better so that is your aspirator now if you look at the, the casings both of them have got T0 plus T the two T's stand for thermistor zero is ground and plus is literally 12 volts so there's no signal or anything they just spin constantly forever in a day whilst you're keezing the ignition both of them share a common dome cover it's the same cover in both and when you order a new one you won't get this so you need to take care of this and that, as you can see, fits in through the roof lining and locks into place. The roof lining is 8mm thick, 
with a little recess in for the for the cover of the dome that's why when you look at the actual assembly if I can show you here you can see the assembly here that's the new version you can see when it sits in place it's probably a little bit more clipped together than that but that's the um, construction of it you can also see that the dome cover has got little serrations around fitted in there which grip into the slots when you push it in and that's what holds it in place so here is a view of the aspirator mounted in a simulated head lining on this model um, and to get a look inside we can just see that it sits like that and if we hide all of the covers you can see you've got your fan in there blowing over the thermistor swirling the air around it very simple but actually a very clever device all credit to GM it's going to be hard to see I've connected the fan to a 12 volt power supply you can see it's drawing about 40 milliamps and uh, you can see um, by way of this demonstration I've got a bit of tissue here you can see that it's actually blowing air from the at the unit so it's sucking air in blowing air out I think if I stop it you can see that you can see the veins there now and if I turn this on it will just blur away on the vision so that's actually working here's the old fan it too does it just blow air out just move air around um, as you can see and sucks air in but interestingly it draws a lot less current it's only 10 milliamps rather than 40 so obviously putting must be a bit more airflow in the new one I would think it's now time to refit the new aspirator into position the trick will be to align the little plastic dome the four lugs to the corresponding holes in the aspirator because you can't see so the new aspirator is in place it literally just clipped into place at the moment I'm not going to bother trying to bond it in place I just want to make sure that it works and that the aircon is okay so now we can put the roof lining back clip that back in actually might be a good idea when you're working on this to actually take the roof back because at least you can get your head in it's very cramped otherwise so the 64 million dollar question is does it work the key with the aircon is if the thermistor goes up in circuit the AC unit instantly thinks it's gone to the very uh, highest temperature which is around about 140 um, degrees Fahrenheit which means that the aircon bursts into overdrive trying to cool everything down and as people will say it's only when you set the control to maximum that it actually stops trying to feed cold air into the cabin once we've sorted out the thermistor problem and, and got that cured the aircon behaved properly but I bought a new aspirator anyway so I thought I might as well fit it something I don't have to worry about it seems to be working as far as I can tell it looks okay as it did before so I'm going to take it to test drive no discussion on the aspirator and cabin temperature would be complete without taking a look on the old Tech 2. By the way if you get an RTC error on your Tech 2 don't worry about it they all do that. When the date rolled over to 2020 onwards you get an RTC error. So it reckons that the inside air temperature sensors at 73 degrees Fahrenheit um, our setting is set to 75 I've been for a run so we're warming up in here. Here is my interpretation of the PCB. This is not a, a manufactured part. This is just my three-dimensional representation of the fan module that's inside the aspirator. So as you see, on one side we have the fan. There's the thermistor, which normally sits in the airflow of the fan. On board there are several transistors which control the fan. But nominally the thermistor comes in on pin A runs around here to this pad here then the other pad here comes around to pin D so it's very 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 simple 
So that's what it actually looks like in three dimensions. Here we have part of the circuit diagram for the original aspirator. You can see connected across pins A and D is the thermistor. Now this is a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. Its nominal value is 5 kilo ohms and it's part of the 3988K range. The manufacturer is EPCOS and there's the code number B57867S0502F140. They're very cheap and easy to replace. They are a through-hole radio thermistor.